There we go, man. All right. What we're going to talk about is a quality defect that I, we just looked at under a magnifier. Okay? We're printing a black job. Uh, it's very basic. Can I see that sample, please? Okay. We're printing this boneless, skinless breast job. And this is going to be... What's today's date? 28. 6, 06, sample 1. Okay? For reference, because I'm going to want you to keep this for reference later. Forget about what it's printed on. That's not so important. This is. <clears throat> so when you review this video later, you'll have this sample to refer to if you need recollection in terms of quality issues. Okay? Now, we all looked at this under a magnifier and 25 magnification. And what we observed, and what I think uh, some of the potential causes of this are this. Okay. Let's take the letter A. Okay. The A is one of the letters. It is typical, in fact, one of the characteristics that you can observe when you want to know, was this done flexographically, or lithographically, or whatever? Flexo will have, usually under almost most circumstances, unless the finest tuned situation, you have some degree of a halo around it. This is because in order to get to print and everything like that. You have to have some amount of pressure. You can't just be touching the paper. There's some impression going on there. And because the plate is resilient, it squeezes up. The material doesn't just compress, it's incompressible like water. So it gets displaced. And so some of the soft material of the plate actually prints. And if you look at a side view of this, and you have, this is your uh, plate surface, I just erase this a little bit. Or just know that this is a halo. Right here. Um, let's say you look at the side of a plate. This is your image. That's the part doing the print. This area right here. This area right here is known as the relief. This is the overall thickness of the plate. Underneath the plate it has a 0 0.005 inch, usually Mylar, or Mylar is a brand name for polyester. Backing for support of the plate. If you delaminated that backing from it, that plate would be very flimsy. So that backing gives you support, okay, stability. Dimensional stability, they call it. And then this here, from the bottom, the whole thing, is called the floor. That's a quick study of the plate, and we might go more thoroughly into plates, okay? But now, uh, uh, and this, actually, this is the shoulder, actually, And then, but the, 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 but the distance here, is the relief, okay? The amount of difference, so, so actually, the overall thickness, taking away the floor thickness, equals your relief, okay? So that's that. Now, but, that, but for what we're looking at, we're looking at, we're interested in this part right here. The image of it. Now, this is coming in, this is coming in contact with the cylinder, right? As it's printing. But as you increase the pressure to a point where you need it to cover every, everything and impress the ink and everything like that, you start to get a little bulge out here. Because the material is displacing. That little bulge printing is what does your halo. Okay? So, we've all observed that halo around those letters. That's the result, and, and in this case, it was excessive. We could improve it, but not too much, but we can try to improve it by backing out the impression. 
However, the, the reason I like this sample so much is because it also illustrates another defect that is not as apparent. But when you learn to identify the telltale signs, it can be a great tool because it can cause you a lot of aggravation. And you think you're solving it by reducing your impression, but you're not. And in this case, I think we also have too much of the pressure between the analogs and the plate. Now that would be fortunate because we can just back out and we'll be backing out more things. We may get lucky. But the good thing about the sample is we get to talk about how do you know when you have too much ink? Because if you have light impression with no halo or little halo, uh, it's printing. You can actually go in or out of the ink sometimes and still not affect things much at all. So how do you know when you have too much or not enough? Let's talk about too much and how it shows up in the sample. The other thing we see in this sample besides that traditional halo is a crustiness of the ink about here. In some places. Some crusty ink. Very dried up ink. Now what's happening there, I theorize, and I found anecdotally to be apparently true because when I make adjustments to alleviate that, that problem usually goes away. What I think happens is you've got the analogs roll now doing the same thing, creating that bulge there, right? But when the analogs roll does it, it's transferring ink to the point that it reaches. So let's say the analogs roll reaches here, right? And it's creating that bulge, and the plate is down here now. And it's leaving some dried up ink here. The ink does not re-wet because when it goes around and touches the plate cylinder, maybe the plate cylinder is not touching so hard and it never reaches that part of the shoulder. So the analog roll is, is, is impressing too hard, it's creating the bulge and it's depositing ink around there that then does not subsequently get transferred to the substrate because the impression is not equally as hard. So that ink that's being deposited around the halo by the analog roll is not transferring to the substrate, it's building up. When it builds up enough, it starts to pick up ink and print. That's what I think is happening, and we'll probably find that to be the case. So what do we need to do? One, we need to clean the plate. Okay? Two, we need to back it off, you know, adjust it, and see if we can get a minimum amount. And then we'll see if we can look at how to tell when you don't have enough impression Versus when you don't have enough ink, so we can set that situation up on the press. Okay, so that's the next step. Any questions about that? Make sense? Okay.